Well, hello there, and good morning, everyone. Let's give a few minutes for everyone to start arriving in. Well, I see Becca's here, and she's still in bed. Good morning. Who else is here? Hey, Tiff. Hi, Crystal. Uh, let's give a big hug to Miss Diane, 57. Good morning, Phyllis. Hey, Kathleen. Hi, Nita. Good morning, Damali J. A lot of familiar names that I see. Now... Okay, so this is the very first live, and everything that could possibly go wrong already has, because my computer already c crashed twice this morning. So if I did disconnected, you guys know why. Says, good morning, Miss Ellen Campbell. Good morning, Jeannie Wallen. How are you? It was 32 degrees outside. Wow, Diane. That's pretty amazing for Houston. So, oh, thank you, Stir. And it's 19 degrees out in where Polly is. Okay. So... I'm getting a little bit of feedback, sorry. Good morning, Vivian. Sob. Okay, so what are we gonna be doing today? Well, let me see if this works. Ah, perfect. So today, I'm actually in wreath making mode. So I figure I take you guys along for the journey. Uh, this is one that I made last night, and I I need to actually make two more of them. And this, well, believe it or not, I am gonna give all of these away. So the one. I'm going to be making with all of you, or doing on today's live, um, I'm actually going to give it away. And this one, though, is actually going to go to a friend who specifically requested to get this. Uh, let's see. So all of this, uh, the materials, Believe it or not, I got it at the Dollar Tree. And 
this whole wreath actually cost me less than $20, even with the $1.25 price increase. But, you know, it's, well, I shouldn't say it's quick, but it is easy and very simple to make. Um, and so let's get started making our Easter themed wreath. Okay, so what we are going to need is this here. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. Let me grab a design board here. So this is a wreath form. It's in an egg shape. Um, you can buy these at the Dollar Tree. It's only, again, $1.25. And I got this sign to actually match this egg shape. Isn't that cute? So, and let's see, what else did I get? I got a package of pipe cleaners here. Um, it doesn't matter what color. You can use any color that you want. Okay. Then I got about nine rolls of this material here. Now, if you don't know what this is, this is called deco mesh, and it's basically a plastic material that um, kind of looks like this grid, and it's very uh, it's pliable. I mean, it's flexible. You can kind of shape it into different forms, but it's also not the easiest thing to work with because it sticks to everything or it gets tangled up. But um, this deco mesh is six inches and it has a total of five yards on there. That's deco mesh. Hello, Miss Topaz. Uh, and also at the Dollar Tree, you can find a whole bunch of ribbons. I got those two that I'm going to be using. Um, I might be using some of their flowers. This is some fake flowers that I can use as an embellishment of sorts. And let's see, what else do I have? I'm going to be hot gluing some some of these Easter eggs onto the wreath. And this is kind of weird, but I guess these are bunny legs. We can use that as an embellishment. And look at this guy. Isn't he kind of cute? <laughs> Forgot to cut the tag on there. This is cute. He, he kind of looks like Stitch from the Disney movie Lilo and Stitch. Hey, Scott. How you doing? Okay. Um, Tiffany and Becca, I have no idea how you guys do this, where you're demonstrating, reading the chat, trying to monitor the whole computer system, but this is hard. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Um, I started to already uh, form my hot glue gun here. Okay, so first of all, usually I do this as a last step, but I'm actually going to do this first because of the size of this. And it's, I'm going to actually attach the sign to the wreath form, or at least get it ready. So with the uh, pipe cleaners here, I'm going to take two of them. And I'm going to cut these down to in half.
Got my scissors on my lanyard. Make sure I don't poke myself though. Okay. So I'm gonna kind of eyeball where I want this uh, or try to I try to center it on the wreath form here and I think I'm gonna attach here at the sides as well as the top and the bottom okay so let me oh thank you Ellen I didn't realize I was doing your taxes Tiff <laughs> Well, actually, you did tell me that. I forgot. Okay. So I'm going to put a dollop of hot glue here at the bottom. And I'm just going to put the pipe cleaner in that hot glue. And I'm going to put another dollop right on top of there okay and I'm gonna put one here at the top insert that pipe cleaner right there and another huge dollop just to cover it up then we'll do left side there do one here okay so the glue is going to take a long while to dry because it's a huge dollop. So we're gonna set this aside for now. And let's start working on our mesh pieces here. So I'm gonna cut this entire roll and my computer just went out. Oh, no, there it came back. So I'm gonna cut this entire roll to pieces that are eight inches. Now, I got three different colors of deco mesh here. There's this pink, then there's this kind of light yellow color, and you can kind of see it sticks to each other like that. Come on, come on, separate. And then I also got this purple color. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be making what I call our bundles. But in order to make the bundles, first of all, we got to cut the entire rolls of Degamush down to... Uh, today I'm going to do about an 8 inch cut. So, I have one of these. Um, this is a small cutting mat that I got actually from Handy Coulter. Uh, and I got it when I purchased my Moxie from them as a free gift. And I thought, who in the world is going to use this tiny of a cutting mat? But this comes in handy for this specific reason. So what I do is, because I know this is 8 inches wide, I can just actually wrap the deco mesh. And at first, it's a little finicky but once you get it started it comes it's actually very easy to do just keep rolling it just keep rolling it keep rolling it around 
Now, if you don't have an 8-inch uh, wide cutting mat, you can use one of your quilting rollers or, I mean, you could literally roll this out and cut it 8 inches or cut it into 8-inch eight, eight pieces. Um, but I just find that when you do it like this, it's so much easier. Good morning, Julie. Okay, so that's pretty much the end of it. And I'm going to take my scissors, scissors, slide it in there, and I'm going to cut it. Turn it around, and we're going to grab the other side. We're going to cut it down. And make sure you hold on to this because you don't want this deco mesh flying all over the place. It, and it will fly all over the place. Ask me how I know. Okay. So we got it in our 8 inch pieces. Now they don't have to be exactly, exactly 8 inch pieces. This is a very forgiving craft in that um, it's not like quilting where you got to cut it accurately and do everything so accurately. Uh, take this piece off. Saws. And one thing about Decomish, if you've never worked with it, it is very messy. Yeah. And it'll fray a lot. Like you can see all of this came off. And did I go out? Uh, let's see. Nope, still here. Okay, sorry folks. My computer screen just keeps flickering on and off. So, are we still on? Okay, I think we're still on. Okay, thank you, Diane. Wow, Nita, what happened that you need a lawyer? Okay, so with these pipe cleaners, um, we're gonna cut cut them all down in half here. Now, I'm not gonna give you an estimate, or I'm not even gonna try to estimate how many pipe cleaners you need. Just know that uh, one package of these pipe cleaners has about 30 of them, and that's enough to actually make a whole wreath, plus extra. And so I already pre-cut a lot of these uh, pipe cleaners down. And of course, I already pre-cut my rolls of deco mesh down to, again, eight inches. Okay. And then I forgot to mention that um, I had nine rolls total. And let me show you. So I actually went ahead and pre-did a lot of it. And we're, we're just going to be filling in this one small section here. But I do wanted to show you um, how to actually start the wreath. So we're going to start the third one, but we're going to com complete this one. And all of this was already, I think, about six rolls of this deco mesh. 
one of or two of each color. Okay. So let's actually start making our bundles. Okay, so I got three colors here. Um, let's see. I got the pink, the purple, and the yellow. So, thank you, Diane. Let's move this. Okay, so we're going to take this approximate 8 inch deco mesh and we're just going to roll it. Okay, doesn't have to be a perfect roll. And as you can see, there's parts that are fraying. So you'll see me trimming it down. Then once we got one roll, okay, we'll take the next color. We'll do the same thing. And you just roll it into a cigar shape. <laughs> uh, Crystal, this deco mesh is from the Dollar Tree. It's a uh, six inch wide by five yards long. And when she got it rolled, just hold it in between your fingers and you're going to roll one, uh, one of each color. Here we go. And once we got one of each color, just hold it in the center. Take your pipe cleaner that you cut in half and you're going to wrap it around and when you get it wrapped around, pull the deco mesh to one end, pull the pipe cleaner tight in the opposite direction. You're going to twist it to tie it off. Okay. Now, you're not playing tug of war, but what you want to happen is you want the deco mesh to stand up, which is why uh, when you pull it like this, it gives it its shape. Okay. And then I'm just going to trim all these edges that frayed off. And you're going to see me trimming a lot because this deco mesh well, all deco mesh frays, but especially the one from the Dollar Tree, it does it out. So Becca finally got out of bed. Good for you. Okay, so here is one bundle. And we're going to need about oh, 40 of them, roughly. Okay. And that's all it is to making these bundles. Um, you just take your mesh. Okay. You just roll it. And it doesn't... Well, if you don't like how you rolled it, like this came out uneven, of course you can always unroll it and re-roll it. Ah, oh, thank you, Damali. Okay, then you can hold it in your in between your fingers. Start with the next one. Uh, hello, LaRay. And I need a yellow. Doot, 
Doo -doo -doo. And as I said, the deco mesh gets caught on everything. So just keep your work area clear. And take your pipe cleaner, wrap it around, pull the mesh towards one end, pull the pipe cleaner in the opposite direction, direction and we twist. And we got our bundle. Hi, Maria. Hello, Nancy. <laughs> okay. If you don't, or if you're not comfortable, like I'm so used to doing this, um, where I can hold the mesh in between my fingers like that. If you're not comfortable doing that, get a clothespin. You just need something to hold it down temporarily. Okay. But what I also have here, this is a bow, bow, uh, bow maker. And aside from making bows, I usually use it to hold the deco mesh once I got it rolled. Then that way I can use both of my hands without the interference of the deco mesh. And I do find that using it, I can do this a lot quicker. But if you don't have a bow maker, get a clothespin or get one of those uh, clips for the for your from your um, potato chip bag. <laughs> That'll work. Um, I've seen, let's see, what else have I seen? I've seen people use um, coffee mugs where they just roll it down and put the coffee mug right on top, just like that. Make sure that it is pretty weighted down though. No. Oh, my morning elixir, coffee, black. Okay, uh, Tiff, I did see your message. Um, how do I make somebody a mod? Is that how you do it? There we go. So we just have someone hold them. <laughs> yeah, just bribe one of your kids, Crystal. Or this could be their punishment. Just, just hold the deco mesh for you. <laughs> like that. Okay, so I got my three. Wrap this, pull it, and twist it off. Okay. Good morning, Chiquita. So we're going to roll that, place that in, and okay, this was an end piece, and it seems a lot shorter. That's because, well, it's actually doubled up like that, but it's still usable. It's not going to, you're not going to notice it in the grand scheme of, of things. So I'm just going to roll it up and stick it in. And the yellow, so we're going to roll this.
Take my pipe cleaner. And this is one of those crafts where you could actually be sitting in front of the TV and you could be making your bundles. Um, and this is actually the most time consuming part. But once you get through this, everything else, well, I mean, for me at least, wreath making is actually a very simple thing to do. It just takes time, but you don't really have to be any, uh, like a true artist, so to speak. <laughs> Um, Tiff, it usually takes me about an hour, I mean, from start to finish. Um, this method that I'm using in terms of rolling the deco mesh, it's the longest method, or it's the most time consuming method, but it's also the easiest method, um, which is why I'm kind of doing it like this. And even though we're using the Dollar Tree Deco Mesh, which is, well, let's be honest, for a buck 25, you can't really expect the best quality, but it's decent enough to make these, this type of, uh, this type of wreath. So, which is why I tried, I kind of decided to use this method instead of some of the other methods that I do know of. Um, but, yeah, it although it is time consuming, the end result is that you get a really nice size full wreath when you do this particular uh, rolling method. There are some other methods where you take your deco mesh, you don't even cut it, you just kind of bunch it together. Um, they call it the bubble method. But with, I noticed that with the Dollar Tree deco mesh, um, it's not a good method to use because of the size and the quality of the mesh. Because, let me hold it up here for a second. So, this deco mesh, I mean, you can basically see right through it. So, it's not, again, it's not the best quality, but what can you expect for a buck twenty-five? There are some other meshes where it's like really dense and really high quality made, but it's a lot more expensive too. Um, Vicky, how many rolls do you need? I actually got a total of nine, uh, three of each of these colors. And you're gonna get a little bit extra but I'd rather have more in this case than too little. Okay. Hello, Gisela, all the way from Sweden. Good morning. Hey, Teresa. Dollar Tree Mesh sort of collapses when you bubble it. That's correct, Nita, which is also another reason why I don't like to use that particular method using Dollar Tree Mesh. Um, I know some people that have like crazy hacks for that in which they double or triple the layers, but I just never had any success using it, so, or using that particular method. Okay. So. Rolling, 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 rolling. I got 
the paint. Okay, let's do the yellow. And this is where the repetitiveness kind of gets a little monotonous. Saws. Okay, I'll take that out. Go with my pipe cleaner. And let's twist and twist and twist. Throw that bundle there. Let's start the next one. Okay, again, when I did that sample, um, I think I had about 40 of these bundles. Okay, so when you start getting the hang of making it, you get a lot faster to doing it too. Now, for me, the hardest part about rolling it is to just start the start of or beginning the roll I should say and sometimes it just gets or I roll it kind of funky uh, ooh, this one's frayed really badly but even if the roll doesn't come out like like a perfect roll um, you know, don't worry about it because in the grander scheme of things, you're not going to notice that. Just like in quilting, how if your points don't come out perfect in the overall quilt, you don't notice it. So, oh, thank you, Sarah. Now, I have seen reeds made out of diapers for baby showers, so I know what you're talking about there. Did you put candy bars in the center of the diapers? <laughs> Vicky, I've got to move heavy coffee table and heavy couch to paint the wall. Oh, I'm not looking forward to that. I wouldn't be looking forward to that, Vicky. Yeah. Once I had a friend who made a wreath out of um, baby diapers for a baby shower. And to be a little creative, she melted candy chocolate bars and kind of put that or smeared it in the center of the diaper yeah that's the type of friends that i have <laughs> with the sixth sense of humor <laughs> celine Ru says our seniors club is having a basket and bonnet contest i will decorate my b and b this way oh okay that's great celine oh i got a pink i need a pink something just fell down oh well i'll figure out what that was later Tootsie rolls in the diapers. That's exactly what she used, Diane. And let me just tell you, well, actually, you can kind of imagine a melted Tootsie roll in a diaper. Kind of a sick joke, but a funny joke. And I got to say, very creative. I gotta get used to this time delay. Oh. I say one thing, but I'm hearing another thing in these earphones, and it's just the natural time delay. 
So, so let me ask this question to you all. I know as quilters, well, many of us are quilters, but if I know quilters, they don't just only quilt. So what are the crafts do you guys do? Because I know some are card makers. There's a ton of you that are probably do some knitting or crocheting. I would agree, quilting therapists. They are the best friends to have. <laughs> because as silly as they can be, you know, anytime I'm in a bind or if I'm in trouble, I know they got my back. Julie Boldo. Uh, I'm making paper beads right now while watching. You know, I never did see anybody making paper beads, so I'd be interested in that. Carol Edridge, Eldred, Eldred Garcia, knitting and crocheting and scrapbooking. Okay. Carissa, good morning, first of all. Um, and you're not alone in that. I do know that some people only quilt, but eventually they just catch the bug to do something else. Okay, work on jigsaw puzzles. Tatting, ooh, Viking knitting, wow. Okay, Barbara, I knit socks and shawls, okay. Garment sewing, that's not, well, that's pretty close to quilting. That's actually how I wanted, or how I found quilting. Um, I wanted to, for the, well, for those of you that don't know the story, um, I wanted to actually learn how to sew garments, specifically pants, because at my height, um, for those of you that also don't know this, I am six feet six inches tall. And to find pants that fit me comfortably, not an easy task to do, especially here in Los Angeles, where everybody's like a size zero because of Hollywood. So I wanted to learn how to sew pants and oh, the problem was that most of the sewing classes that I found were during the day and I have a regular nine to five job. So it's not like I could take a whole month off just to learn sewing. So I ended up just finding or looking to YouTube to see if there was some fashion um, fashion videos where I could learn to make patterns and sew my own pants. So I typed in sewing and of course the very first person that pops up was Jenny Doan of Missouri Star Quilt Company. And so I was like, well, I know quilting isn't exactly making pants, but at least I'll learn how to sew. So I started watching that video and she was making her uh, log cabin. And after that video, I was like, I can do that. So I tried it, bought my first sewing machine, which was, I think, $99 at Walmart. It was a Singer Soulmate. And I just started making my first quilt. I didn't do the log cabin, but I did find out that I could make a disappearing nine patch. So that was actually the very first quilt block that I ever made. So every time 
I do see Jenny. <laughs> I mean, she knows that story. She keeps asking me, did you ever make those pants? And I keep saying no. <laughs> so Eric, look up Deb Johnson. She has a channel and makes paper beads and landscape quick. So, oh, okay. Thank you, Dan. I'll have to look her up. Vicky Lemire says, I used a styrofoam circle and used three inch squares of fabric for Xmas, Christmas wreath three years ago. Okay. I'll have to make one of those. I never did make one of those fabric wreaths. I know how to make them. But usually when all of my Christmas fabric is, well, it's just too pretty to cut it up and put it in a wreath. So I make a quilt out of it or, or I make an ornament. Julie says, I made a lot of my own clothes as a teenager back in the 80s. Okay, that's cool. Paper beads are fun. I'll have to try it, Gisela. I've done glass fusing and stained glass work as well as a couple of lamp work knickknacks. Oh, I would love to do glass blowing actually. There is a show on Netflix. Uh, it's a competition of all these um, artists that do glass, glass work. Um, and I got hooked onto that show, actually. Well, I got hooked onto it because of a specific uh, piece of equipment that they call a glory hole. <laughs> yeah, let's just stop there. I forgot this is alive and I have no edit button. <laughs> I used to make ceramics for mom years ago. Oh, wow. So we do have a pretty crafty group here. Ceramics. You know, I did do a pottery class once. Um, and they started playing the Righteous Brothers. So I started joking around, where's Patrick? Just kind of daydreaming me, pretending he was behind me on the pottery wheel. Says, good morning, Robin. I hope you're not snowed in. Good morning, Mary. Oh, Nita, let me know how that goes. I'd love to learn how to actually blow glass. Whoops, I need a purple. Oh, Nita, you actually teach ceramics. Oh, okay. I'll have to try ceramics again. Says, if you like glass blowing, check out the Corning Museum of Glass on YouTube. They do amazing stuff. Okay, I'll have to 
check that out. Thanks, Elizabeth. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that, Damali. <laughs> I wasn't going to go down that road. I figure I better stop. <laughs> Hi, Renee. Okay, I need a yellow. We're almost done making our bundles. Oh, by the way, I should mention this. Well, you probably can obviously see this in the video, but the um, the color of the pipe cleaner, it doesn't matter in this particular wreath because all of these pipe cleaners are going to, they're not going to show in the wreath. Uh, some of the techniques, um, the color of the pipe cleaner does matter because it can show on the front of the wreath, but in this particular instant, um, the color of the pipe cleaner does not matter because it's going to be only visible from the back. My stepmother enjoys don't ceramics in twin, buell or filer. My sis is in Boise. Oh. And it does get stuck to each other. Mary, I've been lately using my vintage singer to sew my first string quilt. Oh, I love string quilts. They're rather free to make. You can just sew and sew and sew and not have to pay attention. Well, you do have to pay attention, but it's not like you have to concentrate so heavily. You just sew and keep sewing. Here, take an old pair of pants that fit in the waist seat etc take them carefully apart i did try that actually diane um <laughs> let's just say that the results were not what you think because <laughs> i wanted to make a pair of longer pants these ended up being capris So I did something in the process, or did something wrong in the process, couldn't figure out what, and I said, um, okay, let's just get some formal training on how to do that. Okay, and last one. Nope. I already got my three. Oh. Okay, if you hear the music in the background, that's actually my neighbor who comes home at about eight o'clock. Oh, eight o'clock right on the dot. And he always blasts his radio. So if it's not the neighbors, behind me throwing a party it's one of the other neighbors blasting off the radio in the car next time you hear Eric we can make some fleece pajamas hey I'm down for that 
Okay, I just got a few more. Um, this is the purple. And notice I'm not doing uh, the same colors the same way. Um, I just pick whatever color, just make sure that there's at least one of each, but I'm not, for example, I'm not always starting with the pink or always starting with the purple. Um, you know, you can kind of randomize it. Oh, that's a little too short. Okay, so I was hoping this would happen. Now, these are all the pieces that I have left. So it's actually two purple and two yellow. And I'm not going to, I ran out of the pink, or I could cut another roll, but I'm basically kind of done. So there's no point in me cutting a whole nother roll just for one or two pieces. So here's what I'm going to do. I am just going to include two purple and one yellow. Or actually, in this case, I can put the two yellow. And in the end, it's not going to matter. So this one bundle here is actually, it has four rolls. Two yellow, two, uh, two purple. And I'm just using all the leftover pieces. Now again, in the grander scheme of things, it's not going to matter. I mean, you're not going to be able to identify where this uh, really goes until I point it out to you. Okay, so we're done making our bundles for now. So to recap all of this, um, see, it does... Okay, so I had so I had nine rolls of this deco mesh. Now this is a different color because I'm going to be making a different um, wreath. But I had nine rolls of this deco mesh, in which um, you these rolls are six inches wide by five yards long. And you cut the entire roll down into eight inch segments. You can, it doesn't have to be an exact, exact eight inch. Okay. But you cut all nine rolls into eight inch segments. And as you saw me doing, you're going to take one roll. And I had three different colors where there's a pink. There's a purple and there's a yellow. And I took one piece of each, rolled it up, tied it with the pipe cleaner, and that's how I got my bundle. Okay. So if I can flip or give me a second here, guys. And. Can I flip the camera around? There you go. So that's all the bundles that I just made. And I just was kind of throwing them under the monitor. There you guys can kind of see yourself. So let's flip this back. And we'll put you back. Let's move all of these bundles aside. And we'll switch our camera to the overhead. Okay. 
So this hot glue that I put on earlier is now pretty solid. So, and here is again my egg shaped wreath form and it's kind of bent out of shape, but that's not going to be anything detrimental. So, okay, so let me explain how this is going to work. Now, as you can kind of see, there's four different wires here. So this is wire one, which is the innermost wire, two, three, and four. Okay. When I put my sign, I'm going to try and center it as best as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want it something like that or like that. Okay. And that looks good. Then from the back, when I flip it over, I'm going to take these pipe cleaners. I'm going to use it to attach to the frame. But when you attach it, I'm going to wrap one side of the pipe cleaner in between that second and third wire. And the other one that's here in the center, I'm just going to take that, take those two and twist it. Okay. So basically, we're attaching the sign on the first and second wire here. Okay, and then let me kind of flip it back. Oh, yeah, it's off-centered. So we're going to untie it, recenter it. Let's get this side. Okay, there we go. Center, trying to eyeball the center. Okay, we'll just loosely tie it for now. Oh, no. Let's see if that's any better. Okay, so now it's too low. I can slide it up. This one's tight. So it's Uh, around to it, do you have siblings? I actually do. Um, I got three older brothers, and they all live in Hawaii right now. I'm the only one that um, has moved away. I did have a brother. Um, he was living in New York. And let's see, right around... Well, when he was there, I should say, 9-11 um, happened. And so after 9-11, he decided to, yeah, he's had enough of New York and moved back home. So now he's back home in Hawaii. But he travels all over the place. He goes to New York. He, come, he, stumps, he stops in L.A. sometimes. Um, he goes to the Philippines a lot. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so Crystal, this wire, it's called a wreath form. Uh, you can purchase this. Well, I bought this particular wire or wreath form at the Dollar Tree. Um, you usually find it in the gardening section because a lot of gardeners will use these wreath forms to wrap vines around. But you can find them at various craft stores if you don't have a Dollar Tree in your area. 
I do know Hobby Lobby carries um, certain wreath forms. Michael's definitely has has them. So you can find these wreath forms at any craft store. Hi, Joyce. How are you? Okay. And I'm going to wrap this one here at the top. Wow, we're already, we're already one hour in, guys. Okay, that means I need to get a move on. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be here on all day. I'm not sure why my chat just froze. Okay, so what I did was, I, again, I just tied the pipe cleaners and wrapped them around that second and then that first wire and twisted it around. And with the, the loose end, I kind of folded it in on each other and I tried to kind of push the pipe cleaner back in between there I don't know if you can kind of see that but what you don't want to have is a pipe cleaner sticking out like that you do want to kind of push or fold in that the end there and then push it down and that's because you don't want that to um, you don't want the back to scratch your door or scratch the wall, which it can do with these pipe cleaners. Okay. So that's how you attach the sign. Got that attached. And then we're going to start attaching our bundles here. And how I attach it on this particular wreath Let's see if I can hold it up. I'm going to use, again, the outer two. So number three and number four. And I'm going to slip the pipe cleaner of, of our bundle here. I'm going to slip one end between wire number two and wire number three. And the other end is just going to go all the way out from the edge and I'm just gonna wrap it around twist it just like that and we have our first bundle attached okay now usually with the first the very first one okay the wreath form has these crossbars here. Okay, so when I start my wreath, or when I start wrapping the bundles, I'm gonna use that crossbar to kind of anchor it, or anchor the bundle. The reason being that if I just tie the bundle in one of these sections, you're gonna see that it's gonna slide around a lot. So right around these crossbars, I will take the bundle and I'll slide the pipe cleaner in between that second and third wire here. But I'll also make sure that it wraps around that crossbar. So I don't know if I can see that, or if you can see that. So on one end here, I put the pipe cleaner in between the second and the third wire, but on the opposite 
and I also made sure that it wraps around that crossbar so that it doesn't slide. Okay, if you don't want to do that and you don't mind your bundles kind of sliding around all over the place, it's perfectly fine if you just want to wrap it around the third and the fourth wire. Okay, but I just like to kind of wrap it so that these bundles don't shift. But when you start filling out the wreath, it's not really going to matter so much. Okay. So, as I was showing earlier, get this moved out of the way. Uh, okay, good morning, Beverly. Okay, so I went ahead and started this particular wreath because I didn't want this to be a 10 hour live. <laughs> so we're gonna complete this one. Um, and again, you can kind of see the back here where I was pushing down the pipe cleaners, making sure that they're not sticking out and we're folding in the edges here. Okay, so like, we're going to finish this one small section. Okay, and again, all of this right here took basically six of six rolls of deco mesh, two of each of these colors the yellow, the pink, and the purple. Cut it down to eight inch. Uh, squares or rectangles I should say and now I'm gonna continue again sliding my pipe cleaner one side of the pipe cle pipe cleaner between that second and third wire and the next one just goes right over the edge hey Cam oh, thank you I didn't see you come in actually good morning <laughs> And I'm just tying it to the wreath form. And you see, this bundle can actually slide back and forth here. I'm just gonna slide it right next to my previous bundle. And that's attached. So we'll get the next one. I'm just attaching this. Maybe I can show it from the back. So I slid one end of the pipe cleaner in between that second and third bar. And I'm going to just wrap the other end of it. Just twist tie it. Folding my ends down. And folding the edges up. And we'll slide it down. Hi, Johanna. Thank you, Diane. She's reminding everybody to share this video and subscribe. Thank you. Good morning, Noemi. So I'm just, let's see, okay, and we'll tie this one on, Mary says she just looked up and so saw it was snowing again. <laughs> You know, would you believe? I've never seen snow. Only from a distance. But I've never actually, like, touched it. Well, of course I've had a snow cone before. But if 
if I ever saw snow, I would probably go crazy and make a snow angel. Before you end, will you be saving this stream? Uh, Phyllis, YouTube automatically saves it. So yes, it will be saved. Uh, whoops, I wrapped it around the crossbar, which is why I can't slide it down. Well, thank you, Phyllis. Thank you, Johanna. Thank you, Gisela. Okay, so I'm kind of sliding these bundles together so that the wreath can look a little bit more full. Okay. Come to Missouri, we have lots of snow. Just got six inches of it Thursday. Wow. You know, six inches doesn't sound like a lot, but it really is. Hi, scrunchins. Well, thank you for stopping by. <laughs> Saws. Well, thanks, Tiff, for doing that. Isn't Tiffany the best moderator? <laughs> of course, all the other moderators are going to now start going, oh. <laughs> but that's why we love Tiffany, right? Give it a try, Maria. It's not as difficult as it looks. Just takes a little time. Wow, they're expecting 12 inches in Maine. Well, Julie, please stay safe. I know snow can be fun at first, but I know it can also be um, dangerous. <laughs> okay, Teresa, we'll talk, I'll stop talking about snow. <laughs> okay, these bundles again, get stuck to each other. <laughs> yes, Diane, we know you're not chopped liver. You're an excellent moderator as well, reminding everybody to thumbs up, subscribe, and share. So thank you. Okay, so again, I'm just taking our bundles. Oh, remember this guy? This is the one that has four and it doesn't have the pink. But let's see how it looks after I get it attached. Yes, all the mods are awesome. <laughs> Hello, Melissa. Yes, we are live. Okay, so I just put on that one bundle 
that was four and it didn't have the pink and well you can't really tell anyway so again if you run out of one color and you only got a few pieces left to do um, in the grander scheme of things it's not gonna matter See. There we go. Almost done. Uh, maybe like three or four more. So I got more than enough to actually complete this here. Um, okay. Thank you, Joyce. I think I can do three more. Yep. Ooh, uh, this one is really badly frayed, so I'm going to trim it up. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Joyce Jordan. Well, we have two Joyce's here. Huh. <laughs> oh, Melissa, you remember the Eric Oda Fabric Foundation. Well, now it's the, um, what foundation? The Crafting Foundation. Size. Okay. Oh, okay. When you get towards the end of the wreath, yeah, it does get a little bit more difficult to tie these bundles down. Um, but just... Don't be afraid to kind of manhandle your bundles and then just push them aside to make room. Okay, again, this is plastic material, so it is kind of durable, although this one frays a lot. So just be aware of that. I think I just should squeeze maybe one more in there. And maybe two. Yeah. Hi, Grace. Um, Teresa, I do have a few embellishments to put on. So um, we'll see what I put on here. Okay, that's enough for, oh, I got one, two, three, four. Maybe I can squeeze it. Hey, Stephanie. Okay, no. So just this last one is going to fit in here. And... Okay, okay, it'll be easier if I just flip this one over. Okay. Folding my pipe cleaners down. Oh, my nose is running. Oh, I forgot I'm live. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, and I don't think I'm gonna squeeze any more bundles on there. And it's nice and full. I do have one, two, three, four extra pieces here. So I'll save this for another wreath. Okay. Eric, do you have a list of the fabrics make? Do I have a list of fabrics? Um, this isn't fabric. Um, this is deck, what they call deco mesh. It ha it's like this plasticky kind of material that looks like a um, a grid here. It's kind of pliable. Uh, you can find this at any of the craft stores. This particular deco mesh came from Dollar Tree. It's six inches wide and it comes in rolls of five yards. Okay, so I'm taking a look around to see if there's any major frayed edges here. And I'm just going to trim some of it off. Trim that. Oh, uh, trim that. Okay, so this deco mesh is just basically the base of the wreath. And now comes my favorite part the embellishments. And sometimes um, after I start getting going crazy with the embellishments, you can barely see the deco mesh <laughs> on the bottom. But yeah, the, the deco mesh provides like a base for the wreath so to make it um, look a lot more full. Now, in the example that I have here, for those of you who joined in late, I did share this one earlier. There is deco mesh here on the bottom, but it's kind of covered a lot by all these ribbons. Of course, you got the sign here. You got all these plastic Easter eggs that I put on here. So it does, the deco mesh does get covered up a lot, but without it, you'll just basically get a flat wreath. So. So usually when I start embellishing, the first thing I will start off embellishing with is, uh, where'd the other one go? Okay, so these ribbons here, um, I also bought this, believe it or not, at the Dollar Tree. These are two and a half inches wide, and I think they're nine feet long. And so I'm just gonna cut these open, or get these open. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use two of these at a time. these again to eight inch increments. Now, I could measure it and then cut it eight inches, but a faster way of doing it is again, I'm gonna take out my cutting board here. This cutting board actually measures eight inches wide. And I'm gonna just wrap this ribbon and just keep wrapping it. Have you been using the ribbon? I gave you a yes I have, Tiffany. Uh, not for wreath making, but I've been using it on uh, various ornaments 
that I've been doing. Um, maybe I'll do that on a future live stream. But I have been using them. So they have come in handy. So thank you very much. And you can thank your daughter for not carrying out her craft. So I could have all that ribbon. Okay. Hello, Dorlin. Okay, so that's the end of it there. Okay, get rid of that. So this time we're only going to cut one end of it. So I did the same thing when I was cutting the deco mesh, but when I cut the deco mesh, I cut this end as well as this end. But with the ribbon, we want it a little longer. So I'm just going to cut one end of it. Okay, again, these ribbons do not have to be exact, exact, exact. Oh, actually, this is kind of long. So maybe, mm, yeah, I will cut it. There. Okay, and we'll take this plaid colored one. Bye, Lorraine. Thanks for stopping by. Eric, will you put a list of items in the comments below? I'd like to make this with my grandchildren. Sure, Teresa. I will be doing that. Yeah, when this video gets uploaded to YouTube, um, I'll try to be sure to put the supplies or the list of supplies that I used. And I'm gonna cut this side. She will be happy to know it's getting used. Okay, you can let her know, Tiffany. Okay, so these should be about eight inches. And what I'm gonna do is do what we call dovetailing, where I'm gonna fold it or take three or four of them. I'm gonna fold it in half lengthwise here. And I'm gonna cut the edge at an angle at approximately a 45 degree angle. Now, this side has the fold and the edges of the ribbon out here. So I'm cutting from the fold toward the edge at the angle. And we got our dovetail. One, two, three. I'm gonna cut it, dovetail this. And dovetail this. Whoop. There we go. Cut that one. 
Oh. I'll cut this one. On this one, one ribbon is slightly shorter, or actually that's not so slightly, <laughs> it is shorter. I'm just going to toss the short one aside and we'll cut this one down. There we go. Okay. And we'll dovetail these. Again, these ribbons don't have to be exactly the same size. As long as they're, well, we're trimming the edges down anyway. But, uh, yeah, as long as they're within the ballpark. Like this one, this one here is a little bit longer. I'm just going to slide the rest of them to match up the, uh, the edges there. And I can cut it. Okay, these ribbons are wired, by the way. So the edges of the ribbon actually have a wire so that um, you can kind of form different shapes and it won't collapse on you. Okay. Note to self, let's get all the rubbins, rubbins, ribbons pre-cut next time. If there is a next time. <laughs> okay, so I got these ribbons all trimmed, dovetailed. Now I'm going to take one ribbon of this plaid and one ribbon of this printed one. Okay, uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll do it this way. And I'm just going to kind of bunch it up here in the center. Take our pipe cleaner and just like how we did with the bundles with the deco mesh, fold it in half, twist it. Okay. Uh, when I worked at Ben Franklin years ago, I had to learn make bows. It was so much easier with wired ribbon. Yes, it is. Oh my gosh. Try to do a ribbon out of cloth and or try to make a bow out of cloth. Yeah, that's not pretty. You have to starch the fabric or the cloth to death. Soak it in starch. <laughs> Okay, so let's bring back our reed. Okay, 
so I'm just going to randomly place these ribbons throughout the wreath. Um, and when you tie it onto the deck or the wreath form, you know, don't be afraid to, again, kind of manhandle the, the deco mesh to just kind of push it aside. And I'm just going to place um, or try to work a spot and same thing. I'm taking the pipe cleaner and just tying it around that second and third, uh, the second and third wires here. And we'll push down the pipe cleaner ends. Oh, there's a lot of traffic right there. So I don't know why I put it there, but it works. Okay. And that's a bit short. So when I cut the ribbon, I should have left should actually left it long, but that's okay. I didn't want it too long on this one. Okay. So when you do cut it or when you cut the ribbons too short, one thing you can do is you when you tie your pipe cleaner, don't try to pull it all the way down. Let me see if I can get in camera. Leave it up a little bit. Or if you got extra ribbon, just cut it, recut it, and you know, you can just cut it a little longer. This is actually too short, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Okay, but take a look. This ribbon, I pulled all the way down and you can barely see it. This ribbon, I didn't pull it down. You can still kind of see it, but I think I cut it a little too, sh or I should have left the ribbon at the original length. So luckily I have two extra here. I'm just gonna recut this. So I'm just going to cut one side. For some reason, it looked a little too long, but I guess it's okay. We can trim it after. Let's see. That's a little too thick, so let me take half of it. See how this one works. Okay, let's see how this looks before I start cutting. Yeah, let's see how this looks. Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, so I'll recut that. Okay. What's the old saying? Measure twice, cut once? Yeah, that definitely applies here. Yeah. 
but I bought a lot of this extra ribbon so I got a lot of extras and even even if these are too short I can use it on uh, another project so I'll save these put these to the side Open this one. Ugh. Piece of tape off. Yeah, come on. Okay. Well, I shall slide that off. And we'll cut this in. Then we'll take about three or four of them, fold it in half, dovetail that. Dovetail that. Dovetail that. Okay, this can go in the scrap. So we'll take one of the plaid, I'll put the plaid on top of that printed one. That's about the center, so we'll just bunch it up there. Take a pipe cleaner, fold it in half, and tie it off. that to the side. Let's see how this works on the wreath. Yeah, this will be a lot better. Now, it's it looks really long, but when you get it tied down into the wreath, yeah. Of course, you can always trim it afterwards a little bit more. Okay, and then we're pulling this down. And I'm just tying it here on the back. And of course, folding my pipe cleaners down and pushing it back through the wreath. Okay, then coming back and kind of fluffing out the ribbons and Sometimes I like to do it in this um, pattern where it's like an X here. So I have the ribbon, same ribbons going this way and then going this way. Or sometimes if there's like a big sign that I'm going to put or a big embellishment that I'm going to put there, I will pull the ribbon so that it goes toward the outer edge here. But I think for this one, I'm not planning on putting anything big here, so 
I'm just going to do the X. Okay. So that's one. Taking our next ribbon. And we'll bunch it up in the middle. Take my pipe cleaner, wrap it around. Okay, then we'll find another spot. Then we'll push this down. And again, I'm just on the back here, kind of taking the pipe cleaners, tying it down, folding the edges in, and then pushing the pipe cleaner back into the wreath. Oh, the ribbon fell down. go okay I think I'm gonna put this one here Oop. again I'm just gonna push the deco mesh to the sides Bye, Joyce. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, why can't I grab this one? Oh, that's because I, I wasn't grabbing the right one. Okay, uh, I'll just tie it there. Go push this back through. And let's kind of fluff out our ribbons. Thank you, Diane. She's reminding everybody to like, subscribe, and share. Okay. Okay, take another one. Now, the order on the ribbons in terms of like you've been seeing me put the plaid on top of the print. It doesn't really matter. You can also put this print one on top of the plaid. But since it's only two of them, sometimes when I do three and when I do different sizes, that's when the order of the ribbons actually does matter. Okay. Let's do it right here. I'm just placing it in various spots. Um, let's see. Whoop. Okay. When it comes to attaching 
the ribbon. Um, if you can get it around to like the third and the fourth wire, that's great. But if you can only get it around one of those wires, that's also great. Um, when it comes to the ribbon, because the deco mesh here is so full, it'll hold the ribbons in place anyway. So your ribbon's not going to go sliding around. But um, so, yeah, if you can't get the pipe cleaner around that two or a second or no, sorry, the third and the fourth wire, don't worry about it. Just get it attached to one of those and you'll be fine. Um, but I do recommend that you do, uh, when you attach your deco mesh bundles, that you have it attached to at least two of those wires. Some people actually attach it to all four, which I kind of find is a little strange. But um, when, yeah, when it comes to the deco mesh, I usually try to get it wrapped around at least two of those wires. Pulling this up. And yeah, see, notice the difference here. Like that small one, you can barely even notice, but when I cut it longer, yeah, now you can really see the ribbon and it covers up a lot. So, okay, so I'm going to take this one out if I can find it. Yep, it's this purple. And we shall replace it. So what's everyone's plans this Saturday for the rest of the day? I'm hoping to find a shamrock wreath form for St. Patrick's Day at the Dollar Tree so we can use all green wide ribbons. I have to make a decoration to hang on my door. Yep. Um, the Dollar Tree does have, or well, at least the local Dollar Tree here, I did see that it did have a shamrock wreath form, in which I've seen others on YouTube do some beautiful um, shamrock wreaths. And I think I lost a piece. Yep. Okay, do I want to do... No, I think we're good on the ribbons. Mm, trying to decide if I want to do one more. Maybe I can throw some of this blue in. Mm. No, I think we're good. Found the last one. Yep, this one went missing. That's why. So we'll just put it in somewhere. Did I just freeze?
on. Hmm. No, I think that's overkill. I think you're right, Teresa. Bye, Stephanie. Okay, so this is what we have with just the ribbons. Let's get, let's see. I think I'm going to use these bunny legs here. Thank you, Kim. And I'm going to use these eggs. So. Let's see. Do I want to use the pink? No, let's go with the blue. Okay. Mm. Rip off the tag. There. Where do I want to put these? Make antennas? No. Okay. I'm actually going to fold down this wire a little bit so that. Uh, okay. So that the legs are not sticking up that far out. I'll stick one there, and then I'll stick the other one on the opposite end. Let's see. Do I like that? Well, I don't like it so vertical, so I'm going to put it more at an angle. Yep. That's better. They look like antennas, though. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put some hot glue here in the end, all up and down this stick here. I'm just going to stick that through there. Yeah, that should hold. And we'll put some hot glue on this one. So we'll stick it down. Through there. Okay. And then just to make sure that the glue is attaching to the deco mesh, I'm kind of squeezing it so that it does go around. There we go. We'll take our egg. going to eyeball where I want to put these. 
see. Maybe I can put one there. And then I usually like to actually put them in the center of the ribbons, but um, put it in like that. There's quite a few of them though. Here, here, there. This one there. Yeah, I think we'll do it like that. So I'll put it one in each of the center of the ribbons. Um, yeah, we'll put it from the bottom. So I'm just putting huge dollops of hot glue. And I'm going to stick it right in the center of the ribbon. Kind of makes it look like a flower or like the ribbon was an egg nest. <laughs> okay, this one I'm gonna put on its side. So stick this one here. This one, there we go. And I need a new glue stick. Uh, my monitor just went out again. Okay, the monitor just went out on me. Hopefully I'm still on. Okay, hang on guys for a second. I need to check what's going on here technically. Hold on.
Okay, can you guys still hear me now? Wait, we're almost done. I'm not sure what happened, but my computer screen just went totally blank. So I had to grab my uh, tablet just so I can kind of see what you guys are seeing. <laughs> okay. Um, what happened to my little bunny? Let's put him there. Nope. Is that overkill? Okay, I forgot to bring my floral wire. Oh, maybe I like him better here. We'll figure this one out. Okay, I've got to figure out this situation with the monitor. Okay, but, well, this is basically the, um, the wreath. And I might put in a few more embellishments after after this, but yeah. What do you guys think? <laughs> Sauce. Okay, that little bunny is the perfect addition. I do think so. And would you believe it's only a dollar twenty-five at Dollar Tree? Go figure. <laughs> so it's Eric or Wonder Clips. I'm not sure if we could use Wonder Clips to attach them on. Um, hmm. We'll try that. So. It's, Keep the bunny. Okay, I will, Phyllis. He does look like Lilo. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Sounds adorable. Thank you, Tiff. Thank you, Diane. So this looks great. Thank you, Marla. Um, Phyllis, I typically don't glue an object of this size and this weight onto the wreath. I will usually uh, put floral wire, wrap it around, and try to hide it somewhere, then attach it to the wreath. Um, yeah, I just find that the floral wire, like if I just were to hot glue this on, um, it's just going to fall off. So I might put some uh, floral wire just to tie it around right under the arms here. I can kind of hide it like that. And then of course attach it to the back of the wreath. So was, thank you, Crystal. Tie the bunny so someone can cuddle him. <laughs> Have a love. How about using fishing line? You could use fishing line as well. You just need something sturdy to hold him down. 
Okay, but the hot glue gun is not going to do it on its own. So thank you, Barb. Okay, well, I was planning on uh, giving this wreath away, um, but I need to actually figure out what is going on with this computer situation. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a post on the Treasure Heart Creations Facebook group, and I'm going to make it a contest of, of sorts. Okay, so if you're part of the Treasure Heart Creations Facebook group, you could possibly win this wreath. Um, I'll put a post on there later today kind of explaining how to uh, be in the entering of this wreath. Okay, but I, I do apologize. I had some technical difficulties with this, uh, with this particular live, and I got to figure out what is going on with this computer situation. Okay, but in the future, uh, during the lives, I will actually be doing some giveaways. Uh, I was planning to actually do a live giveaway with this, but yeah, you know, the computer had its own thoughts about doing that. Okay, so um, thank you guys so, so much for joining me so early in the morning. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I hope that you learn something new. I hope you give this or try and make your own wreath. Um, I will be putting the supplies or a list of the supplies that I used on the video when it goes up live later or when it gets uploaded to YouTube. Okay. So, yeah, that's it for now. And take care. Thank you so much again for joining me. And I'll see you next time.